Um, again, primary goal in project three, you have a collection of texts that are about a common theme. And your goal is to rhetorically analyze those texts, explain how they fit into some common rhetorical situations, relate to similar themes, uh, are inspired by similar exigencies, all right? And then if you give us uh, some kind of real world takeaway or evaluate the rhetorical effectiveness of these texts, fantastic, right? That's sort of your, your big goal here, all right? One of the topics you can choose is misogyny in hip hop. And another one is the sort of LGBTQ plus experience or homophobia in hip hop. And so we're gonna be looking at these two drafts and imagining what it might be like to collaborate and revise them together, combining them uh, for revision. So immediately I'm struck by this image. It's, it's, it's uh, evocative in all the right ways. It's pretty naughty. Um, the records, the vinyl records, you know, are covering up, uh, you know, or and even looking like breasts, right? So we're getting this sort of good touch, bad touch vibe, the money symbol and a gold chain, hence it's this idea of materialism and exploitation, specifically of black bodies being touched by white hands or uh, gloved hands at the very least, something sanitized, right? Um, so there's a lot going on in this image, actually. It's really good for a blog. It, it's a real thinker. All right, so the women's experience of misogyny in hip hop. From the beginning, women have held important roles when it comes to the genre of hip hop. However, the majority of these roles have been either overlooked or oversexualized and only seen as successful if they are able to be object objectified. For example, DJ Cool Herc's sister, Cindy Campbell, the one who created the environment in which hip hop was invented with them, is often overlooked for her influence and ideas. You get them. This is good. Girl power. Instead of hearing the name Cindy Campbell in, our, in conversations about the true origin of hip hop, you only hear DJ Cool Herc's name. As women began to get involved with hip hop directly as MCs and rappers, their role went from overlooked to oversexualized. Because they placed themselves in a man's position, all right, we're getting a little vague here. Let's let me see here. So somewhere there's got to be a paragraph break. Like, mm, this is the most natural transition, I think. Uh, because they place themselves in a man position, it was hard to ignore them and their musical talents. I don't know what this means. Um, so what do you mean here? And how does it connect to this transition from being not seen to being uh, seen only through the male gaze, hypersexualized. Yes, hypersexualization. The audience and industry failed to believe a believe women could be as successful in the same field as men. Therefore, they started to base their achievements off of the specific flattering characteristics of their bodies. They who, they who, okay? So here's a really good place to start doing a more detailed rhetorical analysis. This is a question of who's the audience and whose purpose is being uh, you know, really focused on here. So who started to base their achievements off of the specific characteristics of their bodies, the record producers, the hip hop executives, television producers, or the artists, the MCs themselves. And so remember, to do a rhetorical analysis means to ask those basic questions, who, what, when, where, why, how, of design, audience, and purpose when it comes to these specific texts that you're looking at. These characteristics were often referred to as the rapper's girlfriend's body. Where's this coming from? As those were the types of women always seen on mainstream rappers' arms. You got a citation? You got a reference? Need something, okay? Where, where is this coming from? The most common theme we see in hip hop industry is seeing women being objectified and sexualized in videos and lyrics, and with portrayal of women comes more views, streams, and thus money. Same thing. Where are my citations? You're, you're obviously quoting now. Cite, okay? Attribute this to a speaker, writer, source, okay? You got to let me know where this stuff is coming from. 
How visually satisfying their bodies are directly affects the amount of attention they receive in the media and by other male rappers. Not only does this influence future women who want to join the industry to create music, but also the young girls who watch music videos that come along with the most popular music within the media. As a result of this phenomenon, we've seen many women trying to women try and alter their bodies. Oh, let's see. Try and alter their bodies to look the way that many rappers want to see women. A specific song you're able to recognize the fantasization. All right, so but so we're we're introducing a lot of ideas here. Um Okay, let's be sure not to jump too hastily between uh, one idea and the next. So you're telling, you're giving me a quote from somewhere that you didn't tell me um, that's relevant, um, but you need to give me some examples of these body alterations, what we're talking about, who we're talking about, because that's not something that happens in Roxanne, Roxanne. What does happen in Roxanne, Roxanne uh, is uh, men describing a woman in an insulting way. Uh, objectifying her body um, and you're talking about that but there doesn't seem to be a connection here so we're we're introducing things and then not uh, totally closing the loop uh, and and all of this stuff seems to be coming from a source again that that hasn't been identified yet and um, just to reiterate going back to this you start to introduce this idea that women are getting more involved as MCs and rappers, and you say that they go from overlooked to oversexualized. But like, I need some specific textual examples right there. Introduce who, what artists, and I'm just going to see this, okay? And and then you should be talking about them down here. So, um, you know, perhaps perhaps Roxanne Chante, perhaps uh, MC Light. I'm not sure. Um, it shows that they have little to no respect for women and how your body count as a rapper can reflect the social status that she that the said rapper holds. Hmm. It is similar. <laughs> uh, I think the issue here is you're using a little bit of slang. Um, and I'm not sure if you're talking about Roxanne Chante, who is a rapper, or the male rapper's that are talking about Roxanne in UTFO. It's similar to how they talk about their money. They're both disposable. As previously mentioned, a woman's financial success is based on the easily objectified and sexualized body within the media, which is equivalent to the male's actual financial success. However, it's not nearly equivalent as men are paid more regardless of what field they work in. Much like the WNBA, she said women in hip hop uh, have traditionally been paid less and received less attention than their male peers like those in the NBA. Unfortunately, these are only a few examples of women's experience of misogyny and hip-hip. And hip-hip, let's see if we can figure out a way to connect that to this one. Because there's a lot going on there. My biggest issue is that there's some introduction of ideas that aren't totally finished. Uh, but let's see if we can pick up on them here. We've got this uh, nice Kanye screenshot to start things out. Um, and it, it's funny, I mean, I understand where this comes from because I put the clip on the syllabus, um, but it's, uh, you know, not necessarily apparent unless we read this. So uh, perhaps I would put this directly in, in the caption um, as a way to suggest that the idea of homosexuality or multiple or different gender identities within hip hop has been a, this sort of ongoing conundrum. You know, that's kind of what this face as a meme communicates to me. In a 2005 interview with MTV Kanye West, uh, spoke about the status of homophobia where he states that, quote, hip hop seemed like it was about fighting for your rights in the beginning and about speaking your mind and about breaking down barriers but everybody in hip hop discriminates against gay people. Um, so I'm really happy to see that we start with this quote, given that we start with this image. 
Uh, West continuously encouraged people to go against homophobia and become more inclusive as homophobia was still prevalent in hip hop at the time. Uh, in recent years, Tyler, the creator, and Lil Nas X have both become prevalent LGBT plus artists in hip hop. Uh, Tyler, the creator, same thing, just put it as a caption so we know who these folks are. Tyler, the creator, is a prominent artist who has notably used queering in his songs. Okay, so let's let's be careful how we use this term. Uh, queer used to be uh, a slur, right? Um, but before that, uh, adjective, okay? So, Originally, queer means odd. It means out of place, something that doesn't fit. It comes to become, it comes to mean a slur for homosexuals because they are quote unquote odd in their expression of sexuality or gender. Um, queer has since been reclaimed as a way to discuss identities that are not heteronormative in a way that is not necessarily derogatory. So as an academic, I will say queer to talk about a large community or perhaps even a designation of scholarship or a discipline, okay? So if you hear me use queer or to queer something as a verb, to queer, right? it means to change something that we once held up as institutional, as this conservative idea, and to maybe perhaps deconstruct it, look at it from, from multiple perspectives, uh, ask people from marginalized groups how they might uh, reshape some of these structures. That's what it means to queer an institution, to queer a space, uh, to queer a genre, okay? Um, but but it's not this is not a, an acceptable way of using the word used queering that's not that's not a thing that we do okay <laughs> so um, so just bear all that in mind if you're going to use that language uh, in your discussion otherwise you can just talk about a note you can just describe Tyler the creator as a notable artist who throughout his career underwent uh, changes. Uh, and then began to identify publicly in in these ways or whatever. You can you can be more direct about it. It's fine. Um, we claimed, uh, and means to augment. Plus perspectives or reconstruct. Okay. All right. Anyway, that was a side side combo. Here we go. Continuing on. Uh, one notable instance of him, and I'm just gonna. Okay. No. Oh, whoops. Not like that. I want to do it like this. Like this. Okay. Uh, can be seen in his album Igor. Albums should be italicized, like books. In his album Igor. Tyler, the creator, focuses on him attempting to get over his prior relationship with a man. Igor helps push and showcase the boundaries of how artists who are members of the LGBTQ community, like Tyler, the creator, can still express themselves with music to help tell a story with their music. Okay, we need a more powerful <laughs> uh, bottom line than that. Um, is there... Come on in. Is there something... To be said about his specific text. So maybe there's some lyrics to look at or some some specific connections that that something is happening on this album, you know, that you can you can write about. Uh, Tyler the Creator served as an influence to aspiring artists who remembers the LGBT. Okay, sure. Um, to prove that. Whoops, oh my gosh. What did I do? that interview words or something, right? 
Um, meaning like, all right, you're about to talk about Lil, Lil Nas X now. Has he ever said that Tyler, the creator, is an influence to his music? Probably. Um, something like that adds credibility to what you're saying here. One artist who was inspired, see, here we go. One artist who was inspired by Tyler, the creator, was Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X released two songs, Old Town Road and Industry Baby. Let's put these in quotes. Okay, which helped him gain mainstream attention. Old Town Road focuses on Lil Nas X's lifestyle. If he were a cowboy and preaches how nobody can tell him anything, nothing, I believe, right? Nobody can tell him nothing. Industry Baby highlights how he will remain controversial and continue to express himself in music. And as a music artist, despite the controversies that he's faced, Lil Nas X has continued to remain a prominent feature figure in modern hip hop to this day. Overall, queering in hip hop has evolved over the years and has slowly garnered mainstream attention. Notably, it's because hard enough not right now. Instead, Let's think about ways that we can conclude these blog drafts that don't simply restate your argument or your rhetorical analysis. Um, I'm gonna start with that question. So let me pop back over to the Zoom. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Uh, let's see, stop share. Welcome to everyone who's just coming in. Let's start with this idea, and anyone can answer this, to conclude this, this blog draft. All right, what are some strategies you can do without just restating your ideas like you've been taught to do when you've written essays before? Um, what's a way that you can conclude a blog draft like this? Somebody talk to me. I need a lozenge. I've been talking too much this morning. Who's got ideas about conclusions? Anybody? I think I just got one, like maybe going back to like the original like quote and kind of like mentioning from there. So it kind of like ties everything back in like a nice little bow mm. in a way, like yeah. referencing back to the first image. Yeah. So um, I like to call that a circular structure. You return to the beginning and in doing so, we have a much different idea about what uh, Kanye West quote means okay so like you introduce a quote you say it's from 2005 and then you start talking about artists that are much more recent okay and so you're right I think returning to that same quote same idea in 2022 and evaluating um, you know does it still hold water now that we've experienced artists like Tyler and Lil Nas X maybe to some degree maybe not right that's a really good idea good job party um, who else got an idea <clears throat> about conclusions. Could be about your draft too. You can use this as a way to talk about your draft. I was looking to end on how like women and men aren't pay paid the same in mm. the industry. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so maybe I would start with that image of the WNBA and BA because it's not totally related. It's it's a real real world example. And I think if you start with that and then relate it to what you're about to tell us in hip hop, it could be interesting and maybe perhaps something to return to, like uh, Potty was just telling us about the Kanye West quote. All right. Um, so now let's let's play hypothetical games and anybody can contribute here. I just spent all this time reading those drafts. OK, so riddle me this. If you were if you two were to collaborate. All right, or if those two drafts were to be combined, if that was your job to combine those drafts, uh, how would you do it? Where are the connections? Because they're not exactly about the same topic. Uh, one is about misogyny and uh, women artists in hip hop. And what Amaya just said is that there's an economic discrepancy there. And then the other is about queer artists in hip hop and uh, the changing landscape there. So if you were to combine those two, how would we do it? I'd say maybe like since one thing I noticed throughout like all of them is that they all had to deal with like women and like misogyny and, like they're all dealing with like minority populations in a way so mm -hmm. kind of circling back to like how it was and like the other texts that we've read like talking about intersectionality in a way and like the different types of racism in a way that also can be applied and then maybe one thing is like highlighting like an artist who is female and is also a member of the LGBT community. That's really, time. really, really smart. 
Excellent suggestion. And so I'm really glad you brought up the idea, uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's idea about intersectionality and uh, some of the stuff we read in Ibram X. Kendi's work, this idea of levels of racism, okay, that there's racism, but then there's gendered racism when we think about, um, you know, people of color and different gender categories. There are uh, uh, economic racism, so people of different financial class backgrounds, uh, people of color of financial class backgrounds, right? There are all these different factors that intersect, that create our multifaceted identity. Race is just one of those one of those facets, okay? And so to look at what are the connections between misogyny and homophobia and hip hop? And what would it be like? What is it like for intersectional artists, right? Who, who are, um, you know, queer women of color, right? And um, yeah, those are great questions. Those are great, great ways to start saying, okay, we have similar related topics, but we wrote about different things. How are we going to find connections? Good. Um, Amaya, you got any ideas of how you could collaborate and combine these two drafts? Things that you would change? Um, I don't, I'm not sure about uh, like how people of the LGBTQ plus community are like paid within energy, but that can be something I could research. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're really focused on this idea of financial economic discrimination, and uh, party is much more focused on this idea of people's uh, gender and sexual identities uh, within the genre, you might as well filter the, the data that you're already looking for, for, um, well, <laughs> you know, um, there's there are people of many different racial and ethnic backgrounds in hip hop, right? So you might as well look at um, people of color compared to white people in hip hop. That'd be interesting. Women of color compared to men of color, uh, and then of course people who identify as LGBTQ plus uh, compared to your heteronormative artists and see if there is a graduated breakdown in the way that you might expect based on those intersections of identity. That's really smart. Okay, great. I thank you all for playing along. Um, do you either through this draft, uh, Queering Hip Hop and Evolution, that discuss Kanye West, Tyler, the Creator, Lil Nas X a little bit. Um, and so we sort of got this idea that there was this sentiment in 2005 about homophobia and hip hop. And then we looked at these later artists and um, the writer told us that they thought maybe a new conclusion comparing 2022 ideas about homophobia and hip hop to 2005 ideas circling back to this Kanye West quote might be a more productive way of ending this draft. Um, so now we're going to compare here. Okay. I actually wrote very similarly Ooh. about like early 2000s, like homophobia and hip hop, and then how later it's become more open about it. So, okay, that's excellent, actually. So, you've already identified a key similarity. Um, Y'all could pretty easily create a collaborative outline where you sort of restructure your, your texts together um, through what you just mentioned. Okay, so let's let's take a look. Um, I like to picture a rainbow flag on someone with a microphone. Picture caption here, hilarious. Yeah, I'm not done with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. The Q in hip hop stands for queer. Queerness in hip hop is something that is rhetorically not often talked about. Um, Let's just be careful about how. Oh, I need edit access so I can make my changes. Oh, okay. Change it to an editor. Um, I was just going to say, let's be careful when we use the word rhetorical, right? To to talk about something rhetorical, we're talking about its uh, elements of design that have been arranged for an audience and purpose. Okay, um, we can just say it's not something that's talked about uh, in hip hop. I'm going to hit the refresh button. Do I have privileges? I do. Um, let me see. There is I was talking about the irony. It was meant ah, to be ironic, like fun. I see. Because there is no cue in hip hop. I get it now. 
Thank you for explaining that. I, I just walked right over that. I read it and it didn't even register. Um, so I don't know. There's your feedback about how good of a joke it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's funny now. It's funny now. No. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Queerness in hip hop is something that is yeah. not often talked about. But as time has moved forward, the use of homophobia in rappers' lyrics has gone down and artists being open about their sexuality has gone up. So my challenge for you is do you have stats, research, things. I mean, I know you can find evidence, but like, is this statistically true? I don't know. Yeah, I can add a statistic. I think that'd be helpful. Maybe, maybe. Uh, especially in regards, maybe someone actually has legit, I'm sure they have done that research, especially in regards to artists like Eminem, who are known for using homophobic lyrics and concepts, or newer artists like Lil Nas X, who are known for being openly queer in the rhetoric of their music. Again, um, in their music, right? Mm -hmm. um, use the word rhetoric when you want to talk about rhetoric. When you're ready to analyze you know, someone who's like audience and purpose, um, then use that word rhetoric. The song Stand by Eminem seems to carry this idea, you know, let B be the finale of scene. That's one of my favorite lines of poetry. But what it means in terms of writing advice is if you have an opinion, which this is what you're introducing, this is your opinion about the song Stand, just say it. The song Stand by Eminem carries. Carries. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Be confident. It's your opinion. This idea of underlying homophobia that's typical for songs made in the 2000s. And the reason you can be confident here is because you're about to present specific evidence to back up your interpretation. At the end of the second verse, Stan, meant to represent an obsessive fan. This is a, that's so funny. I'm glad you know this. This meaning after the song. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't until I read the genius. I was like, that's so cool. What's amazing is um, that's something that I'm finding out. Like, you're not, you're, you are among friends in the, your generation of listeners knows the, um, the, the discursive idea of a stand because of, you know, online environments, a hyper fan, but they don't know that intertextually that reference that word derives from this song which it was just a name of a character stan who was a super fan of you know eminem which matters uh but yeah i love that i'm i love that you learned that <laughs> signs off his letter to slim shady saying sincerely yours stan p.s we should be together too clearly this shows stan a man feeling more than just platonic friendliness towards slim shady that's true but in your revision, I hope that you, this comes after a verse where he describes how obsessed he is with him. So you might take a little bit more evidence from that first verse and stay like, you know, he mentions like a tattoo and how he dresses like him and he does this and that. So show that obsession first, um, since you call him, call him an obsessive fan, but then say that this, this line, we should be together too, indicates something more, right? Something romantic. Um, and that'll make your argument more clear. Um, he references this twice in the song, which puts even more emphasis on its queerness. Um, I went on a little tirade about this. I wouldn't call it a tirade, but I, I talked about, again, being careful how we use this word. Um, yeah. I realized like when I was writing it that um well I kind of represent as queer so when I was writing it I didn't really think about like the implications of using the word because I already use it in my vocab yeah um, and and I'm not here to tell you how to change your language or like to to gatekeep if someone does or doesn't identify it's just a matter of being consistent on how we're using it what part of speech and and what exactly do you mean so like um, this one, I don't even, it's like sort of in the questionable category because I'm mostly, I just want to know what you mean. He references this twice in the song, which puts even more emphasis on its queerness, the song's queerness. Cause it's I don't sweet. know. Yeah. You Honestly, know? that, that whole sentence isn't really necessary. I think I just wanted to like, it's really not, it doesn't really need to be there. The thing that's important is this twice reference. And I'm not quite sure 
what the be together thing like because because Stan when Slim Shady writes back he responds and, and actually comments on that that's what you mean right that's the next part of what I talk about oh, okay okay um so the two references and the dialogue is important okay um but then this bit where you were just mm -hmm. I think trying to finish the sentence maybe like this doesn't uh, add much, not yeah. specifically. Okay, so so I would just focus more on uh, why do you think it's important that it's it's mentioned twice or that it's like mentioned and then responded. I feel to. like I could I could link it to like the obsessiveness, you know, mm -hmm. like saying it like that like twice. You don't really. I could link it to that, but you know. Okay, so. But then here comes the reply. So let's see what you say about this. The homophobia comes later. Um, I want to link that better. I don't really like how I linked the two. What I meant to say was that technically the first part of the song, when it talks about like wanting to be together, technically that's not homophobic in nature. It's just talking about a guy being obsessed with mm -hmm. someone. But the Slim Shady's response is kind of what makes it. I want to link that better i feel like i did a bad job of that um so i think that the transition is going to be something like so what i'm trying to do here is say from the character stan's perspective but from the reply of the slim shady character or persona and and actually it's not slim shady this is marshall matters we, we need to be careful about that too Okay. Um, but if you notice when Stan is writing the letter he says dear Slim why is that important rhetorically who's Slim Shady compared to Marshall Mathers I don't know I know Slim Shady is like Eminem's alter ego that he talks about in his songs but I don't really know much about Marshall Mathers Okay, so Marshall Mathers is Eminem's real name. The the, oh, the, okay. the stage name Eminem was originally spelled M and M, like the candy, because it's Marshall Mathers, two M's. So that's where Eminem comes from. But okay. yeah, his alter ego, sometimes he raps as Slim Shady. And Slim Shady is this dark, twisted person who says all these obscene explicit lyrics as a way to push the boundaries of what's acceptable uh, and what's not and so most of the like crazy violent lyrics that people think of um, are most often wrapped from the perspective or this like persona of slim shady um, and so this super fan stan is writing a letter to slim right dear slim which could just be a way of casually referring to his idol Marshall Mathers the artist or it could indicate that this person is trapped in some kind of obsessive illusion with a persona a character a fantasy right and Eminem says as much in his reply so although there is an element of homophobia in the reply right M says that shit makes me not want to meet you or get together right it alarms me right um but he then also suggests like i think maybe you need some counseling and per like he does try to also offer some some real advice because he hits on something that like this is this is someone who's a bit deranged and it's not necessarily because of their sexuality or or their their identity or anything like that it's it's perhaps because they're caught in some kind of illusion that's uh creating um like these these fantasies are are they're playing them out in their real life right and so so it's interesting okay um but anyway this is all to say that the clue there is dear slim stan is writing to a persona eminem is responding as as himself right all right so the homophobia comes later when i was like homophobia. Yeah, it's like Marshall yeah. huh it's I'm mostly like I talk about it, but I feel like it's like underlying homophobia, like homophobia, like it's not direct, but it's still there. I mean, you know? I think I think this is pretty direct, like saying that what makes you not want to oops, what damn it, 
what makes you not want to meet someone is the fact that they expressed romantic interest in you. That's that's that is homophobic. Um, without further explanation, it is. That's pretty direct. Um, and I do think you're right. This line clearly shows us that again, Eminem. Let's just say Eminem. Um, and this is important because this song is on the Marshall Mathers LP. The prior album was the Slim Shady LP. So anything that comes from that very first album that made Eminem famous is most likely from the perspective of this persona, deranged persona, Slim Shady. And the second album says, okay, but this is who I actually am as an artist. And the songs are much more focused on biographical material, or in this case, his impact as an artist on fans and, and other people from marginalized communities. So this line clearly shows that Eminem is uncomfortable with Stan's romantic advances. Correct. It's not very obvious homophobic, eh, but so many other songs just like this one use this underlying homophobic idea in the rhetoric of their songs. Yeah. Right. Only a decade later, however, Lil Nas X openly shares his queerness, showing you how far hip hop. I think maybe what we could do here is like, how with what right so like just give me an example of like the new dudes in the locker room and the industry baby music video yeah or like i was trying to like purple link. sequin cowboy outfit or whatever like any of that you know yeah i was trying to link the paragraphs okay but... okay good 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 showing you how far hip-hop let's let's make this capitalize sorry has come in regard to being homophobic in the song. Okay, yeah, you're getting right there. Industry Baby Lil Nas X featuring Jack Harlow. There's a clear theme that relates to being queer in an industry that has a history of being homophobic. One thing that makes this very clear is when Lil Nas X mentions quite literally how he's queer. He says, I don't fuck bitches, I'm queer, ha. Which comments on the hate that he got after coming out before this song. The little ha at the end shows how laughable being queer is and was to so many people in the hip hop industry. This blatant mention of queerness would never have been seen in the early 2000s due to the stigma surrounding queerness in songs, just like Stand by Eminem. Okay. Um, I'm just going to mark this as an interesting opportunity to connect the phobia. And what am I going to say? What other topic? Um, misogyny. You know it because we have a gendered slur here which to me is doubly interesting coming from um a twice marginalized artist right a queer person of color mm -hmm. using gendered slurs another great example of hip-hop being more open to queerness is in the song pink now here's a great segue because lil nas x a man using a gendered slur against women even though he's identifying as queer right another great example of hip-hop being more open to, open to queerness in the song pink by janelle monet which came out in 2018 it has lyrics throughout regarding this idea of accepting everyone's differences including sexuality farther into the song renee goes deeper into her sexuality and talks about having to hide the queer part of herself the line quote i don't want to hide my love i just want to hold your hand is an obvious call out to not wanting to hide your queerness and just be with the person you love no matter the gender this song and others like it have become much more common in hip-hop rhetoric as this movement through time from Eminem's homophobic lyrics to Monet and Lil Nas's queer lyricism proves this rhetorical concept. Okay, good, good, good. So I think there's a big opportunity here to... Link. Misogyny. Oh, yeah. Compare and contrast Monet and Lil Nas X. Um, because remember early on, we talked about how the rhetorical situation is also impacted by elements like power, position, and privilege. And we know that racism is something that happens intersectionally, meaning there's gendered racism, there's economic racism, class racism, okay? And so what we're seeing here is a discrepancy between two people who identify as queer. It's just that one is male and one is female, uh, and they're lyrics and themes are different because of it and I find it interesting now you don't have to take it in that direction but um here's the million dollar question okay why would you what would cause you to take it in that direction at this stage of the project well I mean if I'm trying to combine it with someone else's then <laughs> you know it you know it turn my camera back on to stop sharing 
Where am I? Oops. Stop share. All right, there's my happy dance. Bing, 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 bing. You know, okay. So let's let's imagine you are trying to combine it either with um, the queering and hip hop topic that we saw, the one with Kanye West stuff, uh, or one of the earlier ones we talked about, one of the one of the misogyny articles. Uh, um, you know, that's that's a great way to do it. So, have you talked about? Uh, have you uh, connected with anyone yet to revise? I haven't really. I've okay. kind of been putting it off. But... Well, time to do it. Time to do it. Let me see. What's going on in the chat right now? Who's in the chat? Nobody's in the chat. Um, who else needs a collaborator? Tallery, Lee, talk to me. What are you doing? Yeah, I actually um, was going to ask you, Olivia, to collab. Oh, well, perfect. Thanks. Excellent. Yeah. Tallery, who are you working with? Um, Violet and I are working together. Okay, excellent. So then all of y'all are going to be uh, taken care of them. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, while I'm still recording, can I do a little Q&A or can y'all kind of, uh, if you haven't talked, maybe Tyler, you can tell me about some revisions you're planning on making or Lee, maybe you could tell me what about Leah's draft interested you and how you might want to um, collaborate and, and combine some of your stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm still not fully done with my own draft. Okay. So I'm going to get that done tonight. But um, yeah, I I mean, we had very similar ideas talking about homophobia in the like early 2000s um, compared to now. I, I like the way you went about it. Awesome. So is there anything that you know you're going to write about that maybe wasn't covered in the draft that we just looked at? Yeah, I was going to cover more so um, like racism and homophobia and how that plays out in the hip hop community. Excellent. Excellent. So that kind of information, I think the the intersectionality of it, that could come more up front. You want to introduce racism, misogyny, homophobia as these big concepts that are often overlapping in these texts. Um, and then what you have is probably a collection of texts that can kind of demonstrate that push pull, you know, and, and I think that'd be really interesting. So 